duodenal atresia is the topic for this video. And a very quick uh, and easy diagram illustrates what this is all about. Here we have the stomach, and then coming out through the stomach is usually the duodenum. And the duodenum goes on into other parts of the small intestine. So you have the stomach and the duodenum. Now, atresia, the word atresia, essentially means a complete blockage. So instead of there being a stenosis, a narrowing, there will be like a complete blockage, uh, like that. And then the bowel goes on from there. Now, obviously, that's a huge problem. And what, that, what happens is this segment of the duodenum then dilates. So it becomes very big. So this will be characteristic on radiographic findings. Now, what's important with duodrenal atresia is on licensing exams, um, and in real life, of course, 25 to 30% are associated with Down syndrome. So just keep that in mind. They'll uh, definitely put that in some licensing exam question. So what are the symptoms? Well, before the baby is even born, you'll see something characteristic on a uh, uh, uterine uh, ultrasound, and that's something called hydramne hi polyhydramnios. Now, what is that? That's basically incre increased amniotic fluid. Now, why is this associated with uh, duodenal atresia? The reason is because the fetus uh, normally um, swallows some of the amniotic fluid, and in duodenal atresia, the fetus is unable to swallow the amniotic fluid, so the amniotic fluid in the sac is increased um, as a result. Interestingly, just as an aside, there is a condition that leads to oligohydramnios. Uh, that's basically the opposite, where you have very low level of uh, uh, amniotic fluid, and that's renal agenesis. I wanted to mention that. If the fetus kidneys have not been developed, the kidneys uh, normally contribute to the amniotic fluid uh, urine, and because the urine is not there, um, that will definitely uh, be a reason for having low amount of uh, amniotic fluid. So, now what are the, some of the symptoms after the fetus is born? Well, there will definitely be feeding difficulties. Um, the baby essentially doesn't have uh, a passageway to get the food down into the small intestine. And there will be uh, vomiting as well. And this uh, emesis will be bilis. It will be with bile. Now, how do you diagnose this? And by far, the diagnosis is the most important uh, aspect of the licensing exam questions. And what you'll see on a radiograph, on an x-ray, is you'll see if this is the abdomen, um, you will see two distinct circles. And one is, of course, the stomach, and one is the duodenum. And these are two uh, lucencies, radiographic lucencies, are the classic telltale sign of duodenal atresia. And there's a special name given to this. It's called a, a double bubble sign and for obvious reasons and I encourage you to look that up online to see what uh, an abdominal x-ray looks like um, for a patient with duodenal atresia and uh, this is uh, the definitive treat treatment is surgical you have to surgically uh, go in and correct the atresia and create a, a lumen so that there can be a passageway so let's take a look at a couple of vignettes see what this looks like 44-year-old woman develops a 3,120-gram newborn male. Her pregnancy was normal except that she noted decreased fetal movement compared to her previous pregnancies. She declined an amniocentesis offered by her obstetrician. Physical exam of the newborn reveals infant with facial features suggestive of Down syndrome. The infant then has bilis vomiting. An x-ray film showing the kidneys, ureters, and bladder is performed, which shows a double bubble sign. Which of the following is most likely a cause of the abdominal signs and symptoms? Well, it's a classic uh, uh, clinical vignette that has all the telltale signs of duodenal atresia. 
So it'd be choice A. And then the next one. A baby born with a flat facial profile, prominent epicanthal folds and semi-increase. She vomits when she feeds. Uh, upper GI studies demonstrate a double bubble in the upper abdomen. Which of the following cardiovascular abnormalities might this child also have? Well, this is a child with Down syndrome. And basically what they're saying is she obviously has duodenal atresia. Now what they're asking for is what else could she have? And essentially what they're saying is because of her Down syndrome, what other abnormality could uh, this baby be born with? And um, in Down syndrome, there's quite a few uh, abnormalities, but there's one um, called the endocardial cushion defect. And what that is is basically when the walls separating all four chambers are not properly formed, they're poorly formed or absent. So they include ASDs, which is an atrial septal defect, and VSDs, which is a ventral septal defect. And together they're called endocardial cushion defects.